Vibe coating is really awesome. You can do so much without even having to touch code. And with VS Code Insiders, we now have access to the agent functionality, which will allow us to search our application, find relevant context, and the Vibe coating will just basically build out all of the code for us. So in this example, I have a basic Rails 7 application and I haven't done really anything to it. So we're going to use the agent in GPT-40 and we're just going to tell it what to do. We're not even going to worry about the code it creates because AI is able to generate so much more code faster and better than we can, right? So we're just going to vibe this out and build out an application. And so for this prompt, I'm basically asking to create a database for my comic books. I want to be able to upload pictures of the comic books and store relevant information about them. I do need some kind of authorization. So my database is basically kept separate from other people's. And so I'm going to go ahead and send this and we'll see what it spits out. So it says it's going to generate a comic book model. It's going to be using active storage. It's generating that model. I'm going to hit continue and it's just going to start generating that code for us. And so it ran the model. Now it's saying that we can install active storage. It's going to use device and then it's saying that we can run our migrations and now it's going to generate a comic books controller. And so it's doing all of this without me even having to touch the code. So now that it created the controller, it's now creating all of the views for that. It's updating the routes and it looks like it's done. So I'm going to just say keep. I'm going to go ahead and start up my Rails application and I'm going to visit the home page and I'll sign up for our account. Looks like it just wants my email. So I'll go ahead and do that and sign up. Now we can create my comic books, but it's really hard to tell where I can actually type things in. So we do need to change that. So I'll say that I am using Tailwind CSS as part of this Rails application. So the views need to be updated. And so I'm just going to let it generate all of the changes and I'm just going to blindly accept them because honestly, it just touched several different files and I didn't have to touch a single line of code. So we'll keep those changes. We'll come back. I'll refresh the page and that looks a little bit better. And so then I'm just going to go ahead and create my first comic book and it looks like it works. If I were to visit this in incognito, it looks like it won't take me to that. So that's great. But now let's throw a wrench of the gears because maybe I want this to be public so others can see my collection. So I can say for some comic books, I want the record to be visible by even unauthenticated users. And we'll just say that this should be enabled by default. So it's going to go through. It's going to make those changes. Looks like it's making a migration. So we'll allow that to run. And I'm not even really going to read what it's saying. I'm just going to accept everything that it's doing. And then we'll run the Rails DB migrate. Apparently now it needs to update the comic books controller. And we're just going to keep those changes. And so I can run the bin dev to start up my Rails application again. And now I can go to it on a incognito window and it looks like it's broken. So because I don't know how to code, I really don't know what this means, but that's no worry. I can just tell the agent there's a problem when visiting the record of someone else's comic when I'm not logged in. And so it looks like it's making some changes to the comic books controller. It made seven additions and it took away one line of code. So hopefully that fixes it. I can come back to my browsers. I can still see it on my authenticated side, but on the guest user, I now also see it. So that looks good, but there is an edit button and it says I had to sign in or sign up before continuing. So I'm just going to say that's pretty much good. But now let's say if I do want to edit this, and update the description. I want that change to automatically broadcast to anyone who might be seeing my collection. Instead, they would have to manually refresh the page to see the change. So when I edit one of my records and save the changes, I don't want others who are viewing the record to have to refresh their browser. Instead, I want the changes to be sent automatically. And so this is kind of a big ask. And there's a lot of different ways it can do it. It looks like it's going to generate a custom channel, which obviously as a non-developer, I have no idea what that means. I especially don't know that this is a Rails 8 application, which has turbo broadcasts, but it's just making the changes for me. And I didn't have to write a single line of code. 
So I have no idea what it did, but I'm just going to accept those changes because it looked like it wrote a lot of stuff. I'll go ahead and run my Rails server again. I'll refresh my pages just to start fresh. And then I'll update the description. And it didn't work. I was expecting tests to be automatically displayed over here on the right hand side. So I really don't know what to tell it except that didn't work. So now it's telling me I have to inspect my console tabs in the development tools. So let's go ahead and run bin dev to start up a Rails application again. And I'll just go to inspect on both of these. And it looks like there is a problem. So I have no idea what that means. It's some kind of error. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in here. And hopefully the agent will just fix itself. And so it made a bunch more changes. So I'll just accept those. We'll come back. I'll refresh each one of the pages. And now it's giving me some other kind of error, which again, I have no idea what that means. So we're going to have to go back and give this to the agent. It looks like it wants me to run some other commands. So I'll run those and then I'll keep the changes. We'll start up our Rails application again. We'll come back. We'll refresh the pages. And now the JavaScript error is gone. So let's go ahead and test this out again. I'll add a one and looks like it got broadcasted, but there was some kind of error. And I have, again, no idea what that means, but I can tell the agent that seemed to work, but I did notice an error and we'll see what it comes back with. All right, we'll keep those changes and we'll do one final test. So I'll come back, refresh both sides. I'll then edit. I'll change this to a test two. We'll update it and it worked and we have no errors. So this application is now ready to deploy because it's doing exactly what we told it to. And we did all of this without writing a single line of code. So I think we're at that point in time where we can basically start scaling back on hiring junior developers and we can start getting rid of some of our senior developers because AI is now able to do all of this for us without us even having to know how to code. All we have to do is to regurgitate what we see on the screen and tell the AI agent what it did wrong and what it needs to do instead. But now I'm going to put on my senior developer hat and I'm going to go through this as a code review. So I'm first going to look at all of the different files. It added device, which okay, that is not a bad option, even though in Rails 8, there is the built-in authentication mechanism, but some people may like device. So I'll give that a okay or a pass. Next, we have our comic book updates channel. And this is just horrible because with Rails 8 and even before, we had the ability to use broadcasts through turbo streams. So we don't have to interact with any kind of custom channels at all. So I'm going to call this one a fail. It did not need to create the channel or the connection. And it definitely did not need to create an action cable consumer because I've gone down this road before there was turbo streams. And while I did get things working, it never seemed to really just be a good experience. Sometimes a consumer would or would not connect and other times it would receive the broadcast, but just really not do what it was intending to do. But I've never had that issue with turbo streams and it's a lot less code to maintain. So I'm going to call this a large fail. And for the comic books controller, it does look like it did exactly what it was able to. I wouldn't say that this code is very pretty, especially because with the comic books, you don't need to set the instance variable like this. You could just set it out like the comic books is equal to one of these two options. I hate using unless simply because that kind of logic, especially when it's chained with an or and then ends, it becomes very difficult to reason about. So I'm going to say that this is a fail. And again, we have that creeping in with the action cable broadcast for the comic book updates. And that just wasn't necessary either. They should have just used turbo instead. And again, this set comic book, there's no need to set the instance variables like this. It could have just been done once for the conditional. And I'm not even sure what it's really trying to do here. So if the user is signed in, it's going to try to find the current user's comic books and it's going to try to find it by the ID. Okay. But then if it doesn't find it, then it's going to try to find it by the ID if it's public. So this again, just doesn't really look like clean code. And there's much better ways to approach that. We can go to the model. I think other than missing the broadcasts, this was a pretty good one shot. Same for the user model. 
and in the forms. It really looks like it just used the Rails generator, and so I don't have too many problems there. And for the edit, it is using a partial for the form. So on the new page and the edit, it's just going to render that same partial. So that's good. For the index, I really have no idea what it's doing or where it's rendering out all of the comic books because it looks like it just started, but then it just never finished. On the show page, initially at a first glance, when I started looking through this, I'm like, okay, it's doing some weird things like adding a data field. I'm assuming that this is going to be for the broadcast updates, which is highly unnecessary. We could just had a turbo frame tag around this whole thing. And we're checking if the image is attached, which is okay. But then you would also want to check and make sure that it's a image type. Because in the model, we weren't limiting this to just images. It could have been any kind of file. And we are just passing in that image instead of using any kind of variance. So if I uploaded a 5 megabyte image, then that's what users are going to be downloading instead of a smaller variant. But then we get down into here. What in the world is it doing? So it added this script and it's using it to update the content. This is ugly. And honestly, when I'm doing code reviews, I try to be really empathetic. And I'll even let something slide. But in this case, I would push it back because we should not be putting JavaScript directly in the view like this. Typically, I would say that the code has room for improvement. But in this case, it just sucks. So we then go down to the import maps. That's fine. It's adding in action cable. In the routes, I don't like the ordering that it did this. I typically put device down a bit lower, and I would have cleaned this up a bit, but that's okay. And it looks like it ran the initializers. And then we had the migrations, and that's it. So it didn't create any tests. Some of the code that it did write was real sloppy, and it's using mechanisms that's going to be very hard to maintain over time. So let's say we come back, we have a new chat window, and we don't know much about what's going on. But now we say we need to add the illustrator to the comics. So we're putting our irresponsible hat back on. And now we're just going to blindly accept everything that it tells us to do. All right. So we can now run our bin dev to start up the Rails application. And we should now be able to assign the illustrator, except we have no place to put it. I don't see where the illustrator was added. So it's telling me that, yeah, it was added. I just might be missing it. So I'm going to accept its changes and then I'm going to refresh. And again, I don't see where we can add the illustrator. So I'll tell it, I still don't see where we can enter an illustrator for the comic. So now it looks like its gears are turning a bit more and it looks like it's making some more code changes. So we'll accept those. We'll come back, we'll refresh. Now we have the illustrator. So again, I have these suspicions that it's not going to broadcast it. So yep, we updated the comic, but it's not even being displayed. So I'll tell it when I save a comic with an illustrator, it looks like it wasn't saved when it goes to the next page. I have no idea if it was saved in the database or not, but it looks like it's making some changes. So we'll keep those. We'll come back, we'll refresh the page, no changes, we'll edit. And it looks like it didn't even save it. So I'll go ahead and update this again. But now it looks like it's gone. If we come back and edit. Yeah, it didn't save it. So at this point, if I've gone through this multiple, multiple times with an agent, I might be getting frustrated. And now I might call in a developer to help me out. So putting the senior hat back on again, I would first come into the schema to look up the comic books. And I see that, okay, we do have a string for the illustrator. That's perhaps not the best path to go. We may want to have a separate illustrator table that we can link to this, but whatever. I then check out the comic book model and I say, why is there an adder accessor for an illustrator? That's not needed. We already have an illustrator attribute, but we then go to the form and we can see that, okay, there is an illustrator text field. And then we can come in, we'll check the comic book params, and we see that the illustrator is being added and the update action. It should be saving. So the code, I wouldn't say it looks good, but it does look like it should function. So I'll come in and then test it. I'll save the record. I'll look up and I really don't see anything. The only thing I think it could have been was in that model. We really don't need this adder accessor. So I'll save that. We'll come back, edit, and that is what the issue was. So we do have it persisting to the database, but it's just not on the show page. 
So again, we could just keep going through this and it's going to be the same story time and time again. I can tell you what's going to happen next is if we tell it that the issue now is that it's not on the show page, then it's going to update it. But I bet it's going to miss the action cable part and it's not going to broadcast the changes. But let's give that a shot. It's missing on the display page and it does appear to be saving to the database correctly. So it did make updates to the show page, which is good. Oh, and it actually looks like it did update the action cable part. But again, if this was a really big form, this would get nasty real fast. And it's so much more prone to bugs. So we can refresh, we'll update it. And yeah, it didn't work. And I'm not even going to try to figure out or tell the agent that it didn't work. We're just going to leave it like this. So again, vibe coding is irresponsible coding. We have no idea what kind of security implications or gaps are in this application, and we've already seen the mess that it makes. So yes, you can do some vibe coding and do some really amazing stuff, but the maintainability of that is going to cost so much more down the road. There were no tests written for this other than just us testing the browser as we're going through it. But with vibe coding, I've seen in many cases where it's editing things that have nothing to do with the subject matter at hand. What was working, it then just injects stuff and breaks it. So if you want to tinker around with vibe coding, I would say go for it. It is really cool and it can do quite a bit quite fast. But if you're doing this for work and if people are paying you for it, then vibe coding is not the answer. And I want to be clear that using an AI tool to assist you in development is not vibe coding. Vibe coding is simply where you chat with an agent and you allow it to make all of the code changes. You never touch the code. You only worry about the end result. And then you keep guiding the agent to make more changes. That's far from using an agent as an assistant or a tool for your development work. That's just completely replacing it. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.